Hi, my name is Daniel Blackburn, and this is the fourth practical of soil microbiology. And today we're going to talk about how to isolate pure colonies or in cleaning colonies from the microbes that you grown from your environmental samples and how to keep the inoculum for further studies. All right, so less lecture, less practical, you counted how many colonies per gram of soil you had. So the, we calculated CFU per gram of soil. And what you want to do now is some of those colonies, you want to isolate them, which means that you want to separate morphologically different strains and you want to have those strains be a pure colony. You don't want a mix of microbes. You want the microbe to be of a single type. And how do you guarantee that you have a microbe of a single type? I will show you in a bit what is the process of doing this. So you will have like plates in here on the right where you have uh, a mix of microbes on your environmental plates and you're going to start looking at those um, uh, colonies and you were going to try to describe those colonies for the form, for the elevation and for the margin. And uh, here are some descriptions that you can have and you can take note, you can number these microbes and you can take note of the form, if it's punctiform, circular, filamentous, irregular, etc. And elevation, if you look at sideways, try to figure out if it's elevated or not and what's the form of the elevation and the margins from the colony, how do they look like? Yeah. So once you are uh, uh, numbered and identified which microbes you want to uh, isolate and purify, then you are going to move for the next step. Yeah. So normally the, the colonies that you will see, are look, they look like this. They are very uh, uh, round shaped and uh, beige, uh, yellowish color. But you, you may find very different colonies also in, in your uh, plate. So whenever you find very different colonies, you want to try to isolate them because it might be interesting for further studies. Yeah? So what is the process of isolating these microbes? The process here is that here is showing that uh, 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 Butaina is demonstrating of uh, looking in the plate from the, the CFU counts and trying to identify the shape of these colonies and morphologically different colonies, marking them on the plates for further isolation, yeah, for further isolation. So I put here this video with two different uh, zoom levels so you can see the process as she's doing it. And she's gonna do this for all the plates that she uh, counted the CFU. And now from this assessment, some of the strains they look the same. You don't want to you don't want to isolate many uh, colonies that look exactly the same, but you want to isolate actually colonies that look very different from each other. So there increases the likelihood that you are you are isolating different microbes and not the same ones. Yeah. So here is doing again for another medium the same same type of procedure, and uh, yeah. So let's show you how to clean the strain and isolate it in a single cell colonies. Yeah. So here's the procedure for isolating. Now she identified already which strains she wanted to uh, uh, isolate. Here it is. And the next step, she will pick this, this, uh, pick this uh, colony that she numbered on the plate and she will streak those colonies clean to a new plate. Yeah, she will streak these colonies uh, clean for a new plate. And the procedure for streaking is that you want to just touch the colony that you uh, that you want to isolate, grab a good amount of cell mass, and you're gonna you know gently rub it against the new sterile agar plate. 
Now this has to be very gentle, otherwise you will hurt the agar. So with the new loop, you will cross streak that make a pattern of cross streaking that first streak that you have. And with another sterile loop, you cross streak it again and uh, make it in a way that you're doing a dilution process. Yeah? When you're doing this, you're actually doing a dilution process. So I will show you what ex exactly is happening here. Here is the new plate. The first streak that you brought from your uh, uh, the plate from the environmental sample will contain a huge amount of cells. Yeah, so you struck it, you struck in this direction. Now the next streak with the sterile loop, the sterile loop is going to just pick some of the cells that from the first uh, 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 first first deposit of cells here, the first streak and it's gonna spread them out a little bit more in the other direction. So you're diluting actually the first streak in the second streak, and you can do a third and a fourth streak. And the fourth streak, you want to just cross it once and make it like a zigzag pattern in a way that you, the, the cell, the, the colonies that are growing here, or you expect these colonies from, uh, they are growing from a single cell and forming a new colony that is growing from a single cell. So when you have this single cell colony, then you can uh, grow this more and isolate it and keep it in glycerol. But you know that this strain is, if they grow from a single cell, it means it's a pure colony. It's a single type of microbe that is um, growing here. So this is what you should expect to see yeah, from the first streak, from the second streak. And then what you see at the end, you have those colonies growing this very isolated colonies that you see, you you expect that these colonies are a single uh, cell microbe. And you can see here, there's some other that have a different color, slightly different color. So it could be impurities that you are separating. So it could be another microbe that was together with the first colony. And by doing this process of cross streaking, so here's the first streak, the second, the third, and the fourth, you have this each point of this will be growing from a single cell. Each colony that is a point here at the end on the last streak is growing from a single cell. So this is what you should expect. It's a way of cleaning your strains. Even if you are working with your strains later and you, and you suspect that the colony is not pure anymore from environmental contamination, you can come back and do this streaking for pure culture again and you can separate your colonies once again. So this is the process of how you separate your colonies. And it's very essential that you know how to do this to work in a microbial lab, especially for bacteria. Um, so at the end, when you have your uh, colonies peer, what you want to do is you want to keep those strains for future studies. And as you do this, the way of doing this is keeping Glycerol stocks, yeah, glycerol stocks. This is the most common way of doing this. Glycerol stocks will work for some bacteria, but for others, actually, for example, for actinomyces, they're, it's, they're better conserved and if you keep the spores, uh, a solution of spores instead of the glycerol stocks of the culture. What, what does it mean to keep a glycerol stocks? You want to make a solution which has 50% of the culture medium, a fresh culture medium, and has 25% of glycerol and 25% of uh, uh, sterile water. So you dissolve your glycerol one to one, uh, one part of glycerol, one part of uh, uh, sterilized, sterilized water, uh, and then you use that glycerol to dissolve your cell suspension in the culture medium that you're using. If you're using LB medium, you can suspend your cells in LB medium and you use one part of that cell suspension in one part of the 50% glycerol. So you end up having 25% glycerol um, concentration and that glycerol, what it will do, it will prevent the ice crystals when you freeze the the ice crystals will not break all the cells some of the cells will be uh, protected from that ice crystals and in that way you can uh, keep those cells in the freezer in the minus 80 freezer 
and they will still be alive when you want to uh, culture them again. So glycerol stocks are the way of conserving uh, uh, normally your cells. Also, glycerol stocks are used for conserving uh, plasmids, for example. You can infect some bacteria with the plasmids that you want to keep, and then you can conserve your bacteria on glycerol stocks, and the bacteria will be carrying the plasmids that you want to keep. So glycerol stocks are uh, very useful in the microbiology lab. And uh, normally this is the way we conserve most of bacteria. But for fungi and for actinomycetes, the better way of doing it is keeping the solution of the spores, not a glycerol stock of the cells. Okay, thank you very much. That's what I have to bring for you today. And I see you in the next practical.